And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisor channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from a lovely little Westlake Village, California. Hope you all had a great uh, Labor Day weekend, had some time off with the family and the friends. What are we gonna talk about today? Well, uh, Red September is the big thing going around the interwebs and the fact that pretty much every September is red. So we're gonna talk about dispelling some of the uh, mystery behind what a Red September means for Bitcoin. We're also going to talk about uh, Bitcoin price action, Ethereum, some of the short-term targets, longer-term targets, and we'll jump into a little bit of the news going around there surrounding this uh, new hack on stake. All right, let's jump into it. Let's jump into the charts here, starting off here with Bitcoin on the daily. And what do I see here? Well, a bit of a trap formation here, kind of just sideways market consolidation on the daily. And I do suspect, well, volatility is starting to increase and you've got momentum to the downside as long as we we're below 26,372. So daily pressure still on as long as we are below 26,632. I believe that's what I said. Uh, 26, call it the yellow 20 run, 26.6 for daily pressure to the downside. And there's, you know, great volume candles right here. One, two, three. I mean, massive volume. So back above 28.7, I'm ready to get bullish or at least start starting to get bullish. Um, really, uh, this would be, you know, the major pivot, 30,300. And I believe the bull market's back in. But we'll have to judge it and take it uh, one step at a time. Uh, just bringing up. A little bit of the news here today, uh, London Stock Exchange to create traditional asset trading platform on blockchain. LSE Group has been exploring how blockchain can improve traditional asset trading according to an executive. So basically putting stocks on the blockchain out in London sounds like a step in the right direction to me. Um, also, you had Visa expanding stablecoin settlement capabilities to merchant acquirers. So uh, I'm not going to go on the details, but they started with Crypto.com. Visa was using USDC and uh, they called it a successful pilot. So it looks like they are going to uh, move on. I think the rumor was India. Oh, and here's here's the news. They're using the Solana blockchain to move um, to move USDC. So through live pilots with issuers and acquirers visas already moved millions of USDC between his partners over the Solana and Ethereum blockchain networks to settle fiat denominated payments. So point for the bulls there on Solana. And lastly, what happened? Stake $41 million hack. I think they were the uh, partner. They were partnering or sponsoring BitBoy. Uh, doesn't, doesn't help BitBoy out. That's for sure. All right, uh, back into the charts, and we're looking at Bitcoin on the daily. Let's go down to the smaller term time frames, kind of denoting the areas of interest for Bitcoin on, I guess I'll start it out small and then build back up. If you're trading the shorter term time frames, uh, the 15 minute, putting in um, a bit of a higher high and higher low on the 15 or a lower low and a higher high. So consolidation on the 15 minute time frame at the moment and liquidation levels, I think, are going to be seen a little bit better on a four-hour time frame. I'm just going to mark them off here for us. <clears throat> Let's see if I can see them um, without looking at my notes here. Usually using the four-hour wicks, right? Going to get, you know, your next momentous move uh or momentous um you know medium term time frame move the daily time frame about 20 percent the five day about 35 or 25 to 40 percent uh when volatility begins to expand so you can see on the four hour volatility is beginning to expand so four hour could get us a five percent move perhaps over some time uh we are going to cross back down below 25 738 in about one hour and nine minutes so the four hour levels coming in at 26 9 and 26 
Yeah, that wick right there, 26.9 and 26.436 to the downside. It's a little bit higher than I thought. So a break of that range, I do believe a uh, good chance we're going to tap both sides and uh, perhaps break it to the downside and test this trend line one more time before the next bounce up. I do think Bitcoin still is, you know, going to put in a bounce here at some point, mountain assault, but uh, pressure's on to the downside as we denoted on the daily time frame. What else do I want to talk about? Well, uh, Dixie is absolutely, let's finish up Bitcoin though. So for our time frame, we are coming into Tuesday after a holiday weekend, everybody waking up, checking in on the news, getting brought back to speed, what's going on in the economy. I think major economic news coming out this week. There wasn't anything today. Uh, tomorrow, we're gonna have those 30 year MBA purchases. Um, exports, S&P Global Services, PMI, okay, that, and ISM Services, again, that looks like Wednesday, Thursday, jobless claims, again, jobless claims, and then Friday, do we have any major economic news, used car prices, so pretty, uh, you know, pretty light week for for uh, major economic news as far as I can see so far. So point for the bulls there. And what else do we have on the board here? What else do we have on the board? We're going to talk about Ethereum uh, and we'll take a look at NASDAQ and Dixie. So, you know, four hour range breaks to the downside, going to test this trend line, breaks to the upside, probably going to test that trend line. Uh, that's about it there. 15 minute time frame. Let's check in shorter term. Our, what did we do over the weekend? So uh, interesting part of the analysis is, you know, over the weekend is the trap price action, which I don't recommend trading. Um, again, not financial advice and not a financial advisor, but if we narrow down the weekend 15 minute price action, what I'm talking about is the futures market closes over the weekend from Friday to Sunday at 3 p.m., Asia mark, uh, the Asia market opens back up. And the market makers are in there to trap people over the weekend and draw in as much speculators as they can so that they can, you know, do their move going into the next week as we're all talking about low liquidity in uh, this environment right now. So what happens? A uh, bit of a trap over the weekend, sideways price action. They ran it up to the top side, tap that liquidity. And then the Asian market is supposed to be a consolidation or sets in the high and the low, sets in the high and the low. So the low and the high, boom, UK gets that consolidation. And then US is either going to continue with the trend or a reversal. So it looks like trend continuation yesterday, 30 minute gap, market pops up, hits the green 55, rejects trend continuation, sets the high and the low of the day in Asia. UK broke it to the upside. Let's see, UK session, looks like it was pretty much a consolidation and now we're coming in to the United States market open. And what do the market makers do? They like to trap people. This is where the traps happen, where the wicks are, right? On usually the higher term time frames though. So we got an hourly, working on an hourly trap back above here, probably gonna make a run back to the top side of the range um, over some time. Let's see what else. So pretty much, Pretty much that is that is it. 15 minute time frame. I'm gonna go back to that analysis. So US tends to either uh, have a reversal or a trend continuation. So what would trend continuation be on the 15 minute time frame? Down. It would be down. And here we go. There's the range. 
trying to look for what the trap move is. What is the trap move? Very similar on Ethereum. So I will, let's take a look. Maybe Ethereum will give away a little bit more. And I got a meeting in five minutes. So we're going to wrap this up here today. Ethereum bouncing off the green 55. And the trapped price over the weekend is like this. Boom. Okay, here's the low. Here's the high. Get that indicator off. No, that's not what I wanted. No, go back. Sorry about that, guys. So again, weekend trap price uh, between 16.23 to the upside and 16.40, sorry, to the upside, 16.40, 16.23 to the downside. Yesterday during uh, the US market open, we broke it to the downside and then confirmed that trend with a retest of this level. And just nice, nice trades all the way through to the downside. And then today, Here's the low, here was the high. UK session broke it to the upside. So question is trend continuation today, was this the trap? So weekend trap price, throws it below the range, pops it back in there. And yeah, if we can get back above here, you could see a nice kind of stair step up on Ethereum. <clears throat> as long as we hold this level at 1624, Uh, technically speaking, I, I mean, if you're bullish, where would the measure move from that breakout take you? Let's see where it takes you. <clears throat> Let's see if that is going to be some kind of a bull flag, which I, I, I don't like the way that looks anyways, but essentially what you're looking for is a three-step pattern here, something like this, move up, retrace, move up, retrace, and then move up. Something like that would look good and would ultimately get up to some of the liquidity in this area. I think this is the main pivot on the market for Mr. Ethereum, which is gonna be 1683, 1653, <clears throat> which is 1653 right there. And then to the downside, 1603 and 1569. 16.03. Yeah, that's pretty much down here. 1603 and 1569, which is going to be a bit lower, quite a bit lower. 1569. Wonder what that lines up with any previous. Oh, there it is, right there, below this wick. So sorry about this other indicator here, bot that I've been using hasn't quite been uh, working out to my liking yet, but um, really, really interesting stuff there. So range break on Ethereum to the upside of the downside, you can see the range is quite a bit bigger for Mr. Ethereum, but I think in general, um, it's gonna do whatever Bitcoin does, but more Ethereum has been a little bit weaker, but Bitcoin dominance actually did have something critical happen over the weekend. And my meeting is starting right now, but Bitcoin dominance did kind of droop down below our support level. No, not quite yet, not yet, not yet. So as long as we're above here, you know, still uptrend, but uh, you can see on the daily time frame there is a bit of a downtrend right now, lower highs and lower lows. So point for the altcoins there. And um, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow with some more price action. Hope you guys have a blessed and highly favored rest of your day. Take care.